Did you ever want to know how to build your own nuclear reactor? Not just to power your house or boil water, but just for the sheer joy of learning how to do something new? Well, nuclear engineer Vanessa Holfelt breaks down the steps. Enjoy this next talk. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Hi, I'm Vanessa Hofeltz. And we are going to learn how to boil water in five easy steps. But we're going to do it with a technology that was pioneered and developed by the US government in the 1950s. So we're going to need some uranium. Uh, it's not as hard to come by as you might think. The average top foot of an acre of topsoil contains about 10 pounds of uranium. So go out in your backyard, start digging. But that uranium you dig up comes in two flavors. And most of it is the wrong flavor. We need the pink flavor here, uranium-235. Um, so for our little project, we need to go from less than 1% U-235 to 4% U-235. We do that in a process called enrichment. It's really hard. It's really expensive. Um, it's all based on the fact that uranium-238 is a little bit more massive than U-235. Not by much. It has three more neutrons. Neutrons don't weigh much. So it's really hard to you know, separate these out by mass. But once you do that, you can take your uranium, turn it into uranium dioxide, shape it into a little tiny fuel pellet. These guys weigh like seven grams. 4% um, of that is going to be the uranium-235. And, you know, once you make several hundred thousand of those, you can line them up into long zirconium rods. And then once you get a ton of those, you can shape them into these square fuel assemblies. And hey, we have fuel that's ready to go in a nuclear reactor. Sweet. Um, in case you don't have your own nuclear reactor to put it in, uh, you're going to have to talk to the folks at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, there might be a little red tape involved there. But once you have your reactor, what happens inside? Well, fission. So you have your uranium-235 atom. You smack it with a neutron. They get in a little fight, and then you, the uranium atom splits apart into two fission fragments, two neutrons, and you get a lot of heat out. So those two neutrons can go on and smack other uranium-235 atoms and fission them, and you get more fission fragments, more neutrons, more heat. And then those neutrons go on and fission more and more. You know, it keeps going on and on. It's a chain reaction. And, well, it sounds like this is going to get out of control. Like, when's it going to stop, right? Well, we nuclear engineers, we were clever, and we have these things called control rods to control it. Um, they're made out of something like boron or cadmium. And when a neutron hits them, they don't do anything. Well, they become radioactive. But they don't make any more neutrons, so we control it. So results. So these fission fragments, the pieces of the atom, uh, the uranium atom that's split apart, they have a ton of kinetic energy, which is easily converted into thermal energy. They are really hot. So we can use them to boil some water. Sweet. We're all done. Um, but you know, necessarily, whenever you boil water, you create some steam. Well, what are we going to do with all that steam? Well, we can harness the energy from that steam to turn a steam turbine um, and make electricity. I mean, this is all a coal power plant does. So um, let's look at where the water was relative to the uranium fuel. Um, so the uranium fuel is in the reactor pressure vessel. So you put in some hot water. And then it goes next to the uranium fuel where the fission is taking place, fission heats up, and you get some really hot water out. Um, so this is all under pressure. And then you run that hot water through something called a steam generator where the actual steam is produced. Awesome. Then you run it through a steam turbine, spins the turbine. Whenever you have something spinning, you can get electricity. Um, so you get a generator and you make electricity. And hey, Awesome, we can use that electricity to make toast. So in the US, about 20% of our power comes from nuclear sources. Um, so for comparison, if we were in France, four out of five slices of toast would be made from nuclear power. So we made this electricity, maybe we ate some toast. Um, but we have some residues left over from this fission process. I like to think of them as kind of the dirty dishes of nuclear power. Um, so what, what do I mean by that? Well, 
once this fuel is in the reactor, you know, some of the uranium fissions, some of the uranium doesn't. Um, so, you know, just for comparison, we have new fuel and the spent fuel. Um, and the big difference is you make a little plutonium and you turn a lot of the uranium into fission fragments. Fission fragments are useless, but the rest of that uranium plutonium, you can reprocess, which is kind of a way to kind of recycle it, into reactor fuel to run in another reactor. Um, so it's not all waste. Um, so if we dig some uranium out of the ground, we can enrich it, make some reactor fuel, make a reactor, and boil some water. Thanks.